What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video. Oh, man, today is something that I've talked about quite a bit on streams, on Michael Parsons and, you know, my general thoughts on him. And to be honest, my kind of final thoughts on him, whether or not I want to draft him and how, you know, I look at the prospect and whatnot. Something I've talked about quite a bit on streams. Uh, but I've never put it down in a video for the viewers that are not able to catch the streams, you know. So, here I am. I mean, of course, Michael Parsons is the linebacker out of PSU Penn State University. Regarded as probably the best defensive player in the entire draft. I would definitely agree with that take. Um, For anybody that says it, he has immense talent. He had great production at Penn State for the position he was playing. And he's somebody that is a target for the Giants at 11. And it's kind of funny because he wears number 11. But, of course, there are a lot of questions about not only his off-the-field issues, but on-the-field issues as well. And this is kind of my thoughts on it. So, for those of you that don't know what the off-the-field stuff is um, from Micah Parsons, it's really just a question of character and immaturity issues and whether or not the Giants want to take a chance on somebody else that's had red flags in their past. For example, in 2015 um, with Eric Flowers, a lot of teams knew he wasn't the guy when the Giants took him. He had red flags about work ethic, you know, in the entire offseason there. Uh, 2016 was Eli Apple, could not handle the adversity. And of course, 2020 with DeAndre Baker. This is, of course, before the whole, um, you know, incident where he did not rob the people. Uh, you know, he was just being accused of it, but he did have red flags come out of college as well with his character issues the thing with Micah Parsons is that he has been accused and you know it's still currently allegations he could be proven innocent but you know it's allegations so right now they stand he has been accused of hazing other students he was involved in a civil lawsuit um him and other Penn State players uh with um you know basically hazing and I don't feel like bullying is a strong enough word. I'm going to let you guys go and read up on exactly what he did to the other students. It's not exactly the best thing to do for any player on a football team that you, if you want them in your football program, especially considering that we have Joe Judge. And when he was in high school as well, he kind of incited a riot in his high school. So he has quite a bit of things in his past. Now, in terms of, like I said, their allegations, they could be proven false. It also happened, you know, quite a bit of time ago when he was a teenager, when he was a little bit more immature and stupid, I guess we could say. You guys could decide on your own if that's a good enough excuse. And once again, after you read up on the allegations, I'll probably include a link down below with an article describing them. You guys will decide whether or not you want it. Of course, it's up to Joe Judge. And my whole take on it has been, if Joe Judge... The guy we know is building a different program here with a, a different type of culture that the Giants haven't had in a long time. The guy who, when he was, you know, out there working with Gelman to get free agents in here and he interviewed Kenny Galladay, a one-day visit turned into a three-day visit because he wants to see if he would be a culture fit. And then for Adoree Jackson as well, a long visit. This guy who takes everything seriously, if Joe Judge decides to himself that he's willing to take a chance on Parsons, then I'm willing to take a chance on Parsons because we know how seriously he takes these matters. And if he says it's not big enough to deter him away from the player or that he says that he doesn't believe it, whatever the case may be, if the Giants take him, then I'm on board. And I feel like any fan that has doubts about Parsons should be on board if the Giants do take him because of, you know, the resume that our coaching staff has when it comes to taking things like this seriously. And with that being said, of course, if they don't take him, that means that they don't want him. Granted, that all depends on whether or not Parsons is there at 11. Now, in terms of the on-the-field stuff, I think I might have used the wrong word with issues. It's just a matter of fit for the Giants and Parsons. And I'm, this is where a lot of people may disagree with me, but I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, what I really think about him. Now, I've been seeing LT comparisons. And we just got to stop. We got to stop with this. Nobody's ever going to be LT. Nobody in the history of NFL is going to do what LT did. The dude is not only the greatest defensive player in NFL history, but also the greatest player in NFL history. Nobody's going to be Lawrence Taylor. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And I have seen legitimate comparisons to Lawrence Taylor. I feel like people are just so starved at the fact that the Giants haven't taken a linebacker in the first round since 1984 with Carl Banks, which is kind of crazy now that you think about it. That is a long time. That is like almost 40 years. But yeah, people are so starved of that, that now when we see a really talented linebacker coming out of home, um, coming out of uh, 
college and he has potential to come to the Giants, all of a sudden they're comparing him to some Giants greats, but not any Giants great, the Giants great. Let's stop the LT comparisons. Another thing is that we need to stop Devin White comparisons, which is a more recent one. Devin White and Micah Parsons are two different players, in my opinion. Uh, if you're comparing them because you're saying that they were like the best linebacker in their classes, then yeah, that makes sense. You, you know, you're saying that they have the best talent in their classes, makes sense. That they had great production for their classes, makes sense. But they are fundamentally different players. Devin White is just a shut up legit middle linebacker in any um, defensive scheme that he goes in in my opinion. Michael Parsons however is somebody that needs to be in a bit more of a specific scheme at least right off the bat. I'm talking as soon as he's drafted and as soon as he steps foot on the field he needs to be a 4-3 outside linebacker. He's not going to be a middle linebacker when you draft him right away and I say right away because I do believe that he has he has the drive, the passion, the work ethic, and he has, once again, the talent to, you know, learn new things and to adapt to a scheme. It's just going to take a while, like it will with any player. But he's not going to come in here and be the middle linebacker that we as Giants fans want him to be and that some Giants fans believe him to be right away. He has, you know, some people are saying that he's an edge rusher. I disagree. No, he's great coming off the blitz and he could rush the passer on the blitz, but he's not a consistent guy on the edge. So he's not going to be an edge rusher. Some people believe that he could cover, you know, he could be that cover tight end. Um, I'm saying cover tight end. He could be that cover linebacker to cover tight ends, you know, running backs and the occasional receiver and whatnot. Some people believe he can be that cover linebacker next to Blake that we are looking for. And while I think his coverage skills are, you know, they're like, okay in my opinion sometimes subpar i don't think it's what we're exactly we're looking for but guess what once again he can develop into it the whole thing here is that i don't think he is a scheme fit for us yet i recognize the fact that he can be if given enough time and that's what it comes down to and it also comes down to coaching and our coaching staff and whatnot and i for one have a lot of faith in our coaching staff but what it comes down to is expectations versus reality Right away, Parsons is not going to be what a lot of fans want him to be or what a lot of fans think he's going to be. It's going to take time. And the reason I'm bringing up expectations versus reality is because Giants fans are some of the worst culprits when it comes to expectations versus reality. If you don't make the ex expectations right away, they're going to give up on you. That's a fact. I know some of y'all don't want to hear it. It's just a fact. Maybe I should say football fans in general, but of course I'm saying Giants fans because it's the fandom I've been in for years. It's what I've seen but he can become it it's just going to take time and once again if you want him to have immediate success parsons would be best fit and best suited to go to the 4-3 where he could be a 4-3 outside linebacker with all that being said he is the best uh, defensive player in this draft if the giants take him of course it, he's automatically the best linebacker we've taken since carl banks in the first round because he'd be the only one we've taken in the first round since carl banks and i would be definitely a little curious and a little excited to see how to use him. It's going to be up to Patrick Graham. It's going to be up to Kevin Schur and Jeremy Pruitt, our linebackers coaches, to see what they want to do with him. And once again, like I said earlier in the video, I'm on board with it because it means Joe Judge is on board with it, you know, referring back to the off the field stuff. But that's kind of my general thoughts on Michael Parsons. Really, the only reason I don't have him ranked as my number one guy that I want immediately if he's there at 11 is because I'm just not sure how in the world he's going to fit into this defense, where in the world we're going to play him. And yes, I am unsure about the allegations as well. But if he's here, you know, if he's there on draft night at 11 and Roger Goodell announces that Michael Parsons is going to be a giant, I'm all for it, man. But put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.